We have maybe 30 active permits right now. So those are really important to track because you need to have, you need to know when to apply, when it's expiring, because that can shut your whole project down. It's so difficult to just go through and say like, okay, what do I need to do? And that kind of brought me to the solution, which I actually built for our project team. But until I was in the position of, okay, here's everything we need to track, track it. I had no idea how complex and how many different moving parts there were. So now we kind of we kind of describe it as what was then 20 pages is now simplified to one page. We have our PM pages. It's all database to their trade partners. And you go on your page and you can see everything on the entire project that you are responsible for, which is never we've never had anything like that. I'm Nick LaFleur, and you're listening to Age of Agility, the podcast that talks to industry and business leaders to learn how they're building operational agility from within. This week, we're talking to Lindsay Stevens, a project engineer at Salfa Construction, a large-scale construction company headquartered in Boston, Massachusetts. Something I really like about this story is how it highlights that anyone at any level in your organization can build agility with the right tools and mindset. You don't have to be a veteran employee or an industry expert to improve process, build transparency, or gain insights on your work. As we just heard, Lindsay was managing a complex spreadsheet to track permits and other important documentation at Suffolk Construction. When she was first tasked with managing this process, she realized that there had to be a better way. By understanding the desired outcomes, critically examining the process, and approaching leadership with a clear plan and a little courage, Lindsay was able to eliminate that 20-tab Excel document, which simplified and automated a once-complex tracking process. I get really excited when we talk to quick-based builders on the show, but I don't want to spoil the entire story. So take a listen and enjoy our conversation with Lindsay Stevens. Welcome to the Age of Agility. This is a show where we talk to people who are facing unique challenges with an agility mindset. We'll learn from industry leaders, business and IT professionals, and even check in on our colleagues from time to time. Stay tuned as we explore the age of agility. Hi, everyone. Uh, My name is Shannon Curran, and welcome back to the Age of Agility podcast. Uh, We are super, super excited today to have Lindsay Stevens here with us. She's here from Suffolk Construction. So Lindsay is a project engineer over at Suffolk, um, and we're super excited to hear about her role and how she's really looked at different processes in her organization and how she's able to create agility. Um, So Lindsay, thanks so much for being here with us today. Yeah, thank you, Shannon. Um, Happy to be here. Awesome. So can you tell our audience a little bit about uh, what you do at Suffolk um, and a little bit about your background and how you got there? Of course. So I actually just started at Suffolk around 10 months ago. I am in a rotational program for new graduates. It's an entry-level position. I just graduated from WPI with a degree in management engineering with a focus in operations management. I found Suffolk just kind of through the grapevine, but also I've always been very interested in construction, so I've always seen them around. Very cool. So um, can you tell us a little bit about what your day-to-day looks like as a project engineer, um, as someone that's just recently started in construction? Yeah. um, So originally, I'm actually just now in my field rotation, so a day for me looks like hard hat, vest, out in the field, making sure everything is going as according to plan. We're actually doing foundations out there, so there's a lot of concrete pouring and a lot of inspections that need to be done. So a superintendent needs to be on site to kind of make sure everything's going smoothly, things are being built according to the drawings, uh, that sort of thing. We've talked a little bit about you grew up around construction, right? Can you talk about sort of your experience growing up in this, uh, sort of around this field, and then as you came into it uh, as a professional, anything that really surprised you that you didn't think, um, that you didn't expect? So I actually grew up around construction. My dad owned a real estate development company, and as I was growing up, you know, very I was young, and I just kind of assumed, yeah, put some walls, you put a roof, it's not that complicated. But as I started working at Suffolk, I realized there are so many moving parts to actually and so much, many things that actually go into building a building, which I never would have realized. Um, and that kind of brought me to 
the solution, which I actually built for our project team. But I just, until I was in the position of, okay, here's everything we need to track, track it. I had no idea how complex and how many different moving parts there were. Totally. So as we talk about, so you're alluding to the solution, which is um, why you're the star of the show today, talking a little bit about seeing systems and processes that are really complex, but incredibly important, right? So you're working in an industry where safety, regulation, all of these things, right, are are integral to being able to safely and effectively build buildings. Um, so you came into this position and now you're looking for uh, a way to simplify your processes. So can you talk to us a little bit about the solution that you created at Suffolk? Yeah. So the solution actually came about as I started my project manager rotation, one of my first tasks was, okay, find out what permits we need, uh, put them in an Excel document when these permits are important. You know, if you don't have a permit to work, you can't, you can't work. We have maybe 30 active permits right now, hot work, uh, electrical occupancy, and they all expire within a month, some longer, some shorter. So those are really important to track because you need to have, you need to know when to apply, when it's expiring, because that can shut your whole project down. And I was new. I didn't know what Excel forms, what things needed to be tracked. I know that's a little granular, but I really had no idea. The solution that I I built just simplified that tracking process and not only made it so it was simpler to track, but also data you can actually pull an analysis from. So what I built on QuickBase actually uses that data, well, uses like the permit data and and tags it to the actual trade partner and the project manager and gives notification. You need to get it together because you have a permit that's expiring. So that kind of automation is kind of awesome to see. And, you know, I send my little email, they get notified, okay, I have to get on this permit, but you can't do that in Excel. Yeah. So it seems like you were using a few different things, right? So it was a mix of your core systems that you have that you're probably now able to analyze the data that you take out of, right? I think that's another, I would love to hear a little bit about that as well. Yes. Totally forgetting the entire, I'm expecting everyone here to know like everything. So we use Procore, which is a um, document management software for uh, construction. It's kind of cut and dry. You can, you track some things in uh, Procore, but everything else you need to track, where does it live? In our case, in most projects, they live on a 20 tab Excel document. Um, So that's what we started off with, the 20 tab Excel document. And then also in addition to that 20 tab Excel document of things you're tracking, then there's also Procore, which is for your submittals, RFIs, CEs, that just kind of led me to, okay, so there's, we're at least going to 20 pages a day to see what we're responsible for. How can we simplify this? And the answer was QuickBase. So now everything that um, was tracked outside of QuickBase is now tracked in QuickBase. My favorite aspect of it is that it's literally like an Excel document. It's an Excel document, but there's so much more, there's so many more capabilities and being able to tie that to people and database. And the whole idea of it is that if, some, if one thing changes, you don't have to go back and change everything. It kind of automates. Like, I, we just want to automate our processes. Uh, so yeah, I everything that lived in Excel now lives in QuickBase and its own tables in QuickBase. So everything is input into QuickBase. And then items that live in Procore, such as submittals, um, RFIs, CEs, those are then pulled into QuickBase to view. And those tables are manipulated so you can see what do, am I responsible for, um, which Procore doesn't give you that ability. So it's super helpful. So now we kind of we kind of describe it as what was then 20 pages is now simplified to one page. We have our PM pages. It's all database to their trade partners. Then you go on your page and you can see everything on the entire project that you are responsible for. So it's super helpful and lead, leads to a lot of transparency between, okay, what am what am I doing? What am I responsible for today? What is overdue? And yeah, so it's definitely simplified that process and made systems a lot easier. And I actually did a presentation to, I think it was like 40 or 50 um, PMs at Suffolk um, on what I built on QuickBase. So it's kind of awesome to see that not only I built something that works for our team, but I built something that 
so many other project teams at Suffolk see use for and want on their project team. Yeah. All right. We want to talk about that part. So let's go back to um, when you first joined Suffolk and you got this project, right? And you saw that there were, that you were asked to track things in Excel. But the first thing you did is said, I think we can do better. <laughs> let's find a way to improve this. I think the bigger thing is that you were able to really define what this solution looked like um, when you saw a problem right in front of you, right? And now I'm sure you're getting asked uh, across the organization how to scale this, right? From, co from corporate and all other things. So I'm going to answer this question with like a little adage that I actually used at my interview. Um, and it's, it's all gonna tie in and you'll kind of understand more of my thought process. WPI was an entrepreneurship class if you did the project, did the bare minimum, followed the rubric, you got an 85%. That extra 15% was how you innovated it, how, how you improved what your project was supposed to be. You get 100% if you go beyond what you're, what's expected of you. But when I was in my interview, um, they asked me a question and I said, well, every time someone asks something of me and expects me to do something, I think of it as, oh, I do the bare minimum of what you're asking me, I'm 85% there to get that 100%, which I'm always going to strive for, I'm going to look for improvements. How can we better this process? How can we make, how can we make things easier? How can we make things better? There's always room for innovation and improvement. So that kind of brings us back to what I built. Um, I was told, okay, track this. Here's, here's an Excel document, here's some examples. I'm like, okay, so if I make an Excel document and I, and I track all these things, that's 85%. But how do I get to that 100% and make this much more much more simple make it something that we can actually take that data and analyze put it into power bi put it into dashboards actually visualize and see that data um as compared to 20 different excel sheets it was super simple just for me the low code no code platform aspect of it allowed me to take what i wanted to do from excel and take from procore and make it something extremely useful and scalable for our project so we ask everyone on this podcast the same question. So we ask folks, how do you define agility in your role at your company, even in your life for that matter? You know, agility, does, agility doesn't live in a vacuum. It is so, there are so many different ways to innovate processes. And I don't know, it kind of sounds like a cliche thing, but anybody can really, if you have it, see an issue, don't be, a, don't be afraid to speak up and come up with a solution. I just started at the company. I was a couple, a couple months into this position and I said, you know what, let's do something different. I think there is definitely an opportunity to say that anybody can be agile, right? It sounds like maybe a word that is used to define, you know, a, cl a classic develop developer sort of mentality or is used to define a bunch of different things, right? But really we're finding that in the world that we live in now, it is just the way that we have to operate in businesses, right? You are a perfect example of seeing a bunch of problems and saying, or not even something that was defined as a problem historically, but saying like, hey, maybe this is something we can do better. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today, Lindsay. It was great to hear your story um, and getting to talk to you. I know this is your first podcast appearance and I think you crushed it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And to all of you out there, make sure that you like and subscribe. You can listen to us on anywhere you hear your or watch your favorite podcasts as well as quickbase.com slash podcast. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. I'm going to make everybody on my team listen to this too. So we're going to have a whole bunch of new Age of Agility podcast listeners, especially my grandma. Shout out to my grandma.